So maybe talk about that, like how, because you went to Dartmouth, how did you get into Dartmouth? How was that like for you? And Yeah, um, so, well, this is more of advice on how to get into schools, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you because this is an area that I, I, I do know good about, about because my brother works in this space. Um, if you want to go to a PhD, especially, uh, people often just apply and think, okay, you know, my application's out there. Let me just wait. That's really not the right approach. That's terrible. You have to contact professors and talk to them because think about the commitment you're making. You're going to work for somebody for, I don't know, five, seven years. And you think that it makes sense that you would sign on to that person without having spoken to them? That makes no sense, right? So if you want to maximize your chances, the right thing is to figure out which professor interests you because that's usually why you do a PhD. You like this person's research. You email them with your resume and you write a few lines of what you've done, right? You should have some research experience, otherwise it's gonna be very tough to get in, right? And then when you when you when they when they see the email, if you have like a good record, you're probably gonna get a call back, depend you know, from depends, right? Obviously it depends on your record, right? But you wanna try to get that call with that person. And that call is not informal. It sounds informal, but he's interviewing you. He or she is interviewing you. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. And a few tips I can give you there. Um this podcast might go longer now, but a few tips I can give you there is remember that the way they usually test you is just, they're trying to see how smart you are and how passionate you are about their work. That's pretty much the summary of what they're looking for, right? Because you, you, you can be a smart person, but if you're not going to stay motivated for five years, that you're going to have a problem, right? Because he needs you, he or she needs you to be motivated for that time. So the motivation is harder to judge, but the intellect, the way they judge it is they usually look at your old research projects and ask you questions about what you worked on. Not just like simple questions. They want to go into the theory. They're professors, right? So they usually know enough to be able to catch you on something. And this is typically, I mean, I've seen this with quite a few professors. They found their own way to figure out like some technical aspect of what you've worked on. The other tip I would give you, which maybe is, um, I guess, not quite intuitive right away is don't just, if the guy, if the person gave you a call, don't just show up on the call and say, hey, how's it going? Go look at their research, figure out what they're working on and even read a few papers. Um, okay, I'll tell you, I mean, don't, don't really tell them that you read, read through so many of their papers, right? Try to make it act, make it seem like, you know, when you're hearing about the research, you're getting some ideas as well, but have some ideas or questions from the right. research that like make prepare you- prepare for the actual- Prepare for it, but you know, you don't have to really tell them, you know what, I spent five hours reading your papers, and that's yeah. why I have these ideas. Yeah. You get my point, right? This actually, um, you'd be surprised how well this can work. Now, the main hesitation I've seen with people is, they'll email and then if they don't get a response, they don't call the person. You should even try calling them if you actually like the professors, just out of the blue because they do get, people don't get it. They are, it's not just that they're busy, they're getting a lot of emails. They may not have really read through yours. It's actually possible, right? So if you call them on the phone, it shows a different level of commitment from you. And mm. you know, uh, it's possible that if you call them that they'll give you the time of day, right? You don't want to call them and say, hey, how's it going? You know, let's chat. You want to, you want to say it politely, right? Uh, hi, I'm Aladdin. Um, I, want to, if, I was wondering if you have a few minutes to chat. I applied to the PhD program and I thought your, your research was very interesting, right? They may or may not take the call. They might kind of look at your resume during the call and be like, okay, I, I have time here. It can work, but don't, don't expect this kind of stuff to backfire. This is the other problem with people is they think, oh, if I do this, it's going to backfire. They're going to go to the admissions committee and say, I don't want, don't let this person, in. this doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Why would anybody do that? that? That makes no sense. So these are actual things I've heard from students who don't want to talk to the professor. The other very strange thing that I've noticed is some people are not even willing to talk to the professor. They're just like nervous about emailing them or something. Mm -hmm. This is just strange. There's no reason. Um, they're expecting it. Um, I'll, 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 I should stop this. This is not the conversation. No, but that's great. Like, I think um, main question people have is, first of all, they wonder, uh, should they do a PhD? And then they wonder, right, how do I actually get into a yeah, good PhD? Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, okay, then I'll, I'll talk more about it. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, this hesitation aspect doesn't make, make sense, but I've seen this a lot. They kind of question whether you should do it and so on. And the other problem is there's some professors that will even write, you know, don't contact me if you want to do a PhD. Just, oh, really? Just apply. I've seen mm -hmm. it. And you, you read it and you think, you know what? It doesn't matter for this specific department or this school to contact. But this is a real case. 
the CS Department of Dartmouth, there's a professor who has this written. And I've spoken to the chair of the uh, CS department who told me, if you want to get in, talk to a few professors to generate interest. So in that specific program, they actually want you to talk to multiple professors because mm -hmm. um, they don't know, uh, they, they can only accept a certain number. And they want to make sure that if you get accepted, maybe you don't like the first professor, you can move to another one. So that's an even more extreme case where they, they, the, the chair is actually telling me directly, get interest from multiple people, not just one, right? And there's one professor in that department who literally wrote on his website, just apply, don't contact me. So when you read this, you're like, you know what, uh, yeah, I don't need to contact. And in fact, I have a friend who told me this, right? But you have to be a bit wary of the misinformation there, right? Because I'm not guessing here, right? It's not just that I've done the program. I've talked to the chair of the engineering department as well uh, at Dartmouth, where, where I went to school. Um, it's even more extreme there. It's very much uh, professor-based admissions to the point where the professor goes to the admissions committee, says, I want this person, you're in. The reason is the funding mm -hmm. in, the, in the engineering school at Dartmouth comes from the professor, so they don't interfere. I know a case where <laughs> there, was, there was a guy, he was a very smart guy, New Ze he was from New Zealand, very smart guy. He applied to the program after one of the professors said, I want you to do a PhD with me, right? He got rejected because one of his scores, I think the GRE score was so low, it didn't make the minimum bar. And so then he got a rejection. He called the professor, he's like, I got rejected. He's like, what? He's like, uh, give me a second. He went to the admissions committee and then he got a admissions letter in his mailbox, right? Uh, even for me, I talked to the professor on the phone one day. The next day I had an admissions letter in my inbox. Uh, the reason I'm telling you this is because people a lot of the times wonder if the advice is good or not, if, if you know what you're talking about or something along those lines, and they hesitate before, because of this. But this is kind of, uh, I think people often know about it, but sometimes they don't and they hesitate a lot. Now, I'll caveat this with something else because there's a lot of people who get in without calling. A good number. That does not mean that that's the best approach. The reason they get in is professors do look through the pile of resumes and they might find somebody interesting and they'll say, you know what, I like this person, right? That doesn't mean that that's going to happen to everybody, right? That's going to happen to some students. And especially there are certain profiles where they often call them, anyway, it doesn't matter. They call them rock star students as well. They have very high GPAs, very good research experience and references. By the way, you need good recommendations as well. It's not just about research and GPA. The recommendations are super important. Um, and they may just get in organically, but that doesn't mean that you maximize your own chances, right? Everyone should be calling. For the masters, because that's more common to do, I will just mention that there's a research-based master.